Well, from Broadway to the big screen, Robin De Jesus can make us feel all the emotions. Now in the new true crime series, Welcome to Chippendales, he brings us to the dark world of its founder and his right-hand man, Ray, played by Robin. Take a look. There must have been about 2,000 ladies in there. 2,000? At least, probably maybe more. They're playing places like this every night. I grabbed a thingy. Detroit, Atlanta, St. Louis. I feel like Nick kind of played you. Like he wasn't straight with you about how big this was gonna be. How you even know he's being real with you about how much money he's coming in? It could be 10 times the amount. I mean, by the looks of things, I'm signing it right. And Robin joins us now. Welcome, Robin. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. You just had in that clip something ain't right. Something is right. Something ain't right, it, oh my God. <laughs> so, so the backstory of Chippendales is like definitely worthy of a series with the the sabotage and the murders and the arson attacks. I had no idea yeah. any of this. Right? Did you? No, not at all. I, I you know, for me, watching Chippendales, or, or reading the script, I should say, was all new information as a kid. All I knew about Chippendales was that I was like a queer kid, a queer kid attracted to men, and I was like, there were men on screen, yeah. you know. That's all I knew as a kid. And then as I got older and and I, I got the audition, I knew about the SNL sketch. I knew what it was in the Zeitgeist. I remember yeah. watching Jenny Jones, but it wasn't until my callback that I read up on all of those crazy facts. It's a bizarre story. It's but bizarre. It's and I think the people are enjoying the show, and maybe they don't even realize that this is based on like facts. This oh. is based on, this is like a true crime story. No, this is completely inspired by real things that happen. We take some liberties with it, of, of course. You know, my character explores new stuff, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a fascinating story, and I think everyone should be surprised by it. And fascinating and entertaining. But, you, you know, you play Ray. So tell me kind of how Ray, Ray's a real person. Tell me how he gets kind of sucked into this dark world. Yeah, Ray Colon was a working class dude from the Bronx, uh, Puerto Rican. I think maybe also Italian. And I think he was, he's a survivor, and, uh, and he was trying to climb a social ladder, and he, that got him to L.A. from the Bronx via Puerto Rico. He meets Kumail's character. He ends up getting, like, you know, involved in some shady things, yeah. and then he's got to deal with the consequences of that. And then once you're in, you're in. Oh, that's once, you, once you're in, it's like, that's it. There's no turning back from, from the decisions from he that. makes. From yeah. that. So how much did, is there out about this guy, though? Could you do, was there a lot of research you could do on him, or did you have to, like, create a lot of You it? know what's funny is there was a podcast I listened to. There were several podcasts, and one of them said that whenever people were asked about Ray Colon, people didn't feel comfortable enough to give responses. Ooh. So it is really, it is, it's very vague. What I did find out that's fascinating, we don't explore in, in the show is he was, all of these terrible decisions he made were compromised by the fact that he had an illness and he knew he was dying at a very young age. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so the stakes were very high for him. Yeah, because I was going to say, do you, th do, you mean, do you see him as a bad guy or just a guy that got caught up and did bad things to survive? I mean, he did pretty bad things, but I yeah. think he did get caught up. I think, I think greed got to him. I think... He just wanted to get out of the situation he came from, and eventually he didn't realize he was blinded by that, those wants and those yeah. need, needs. It just happened to a lot of people throughout yeah. time. Uh, but what do you think makes him so loyal to Steve? Because he's like, he's a loyal guy to him. He's incredibly loyal. I think it's multiple things. I think, I think one of them is, at that point in the 80s and the 70s, seeing a brown man like myself yeah. who's successful and running his own business, I think I just wanted to attach myself to that, become yeah. a part of it, reap the benefits of it myself, be inspired by Kumail's character, being a brown man running a business, and to the point where all of that just blinds him of the crazy stuff, dehumanizing stuff yes, that he does. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, let's like flip it to a happier mm -hmm. note. You, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. that. you guest starred on Santiago of the Sea. Yeah. Oh, this is a completely different kind of show. But um, the show recently got an Emmy nomination for uh, Best Preschool Animation Show. How much fun was it to like mix up the projects, number one, but just to lend your voice to this? So much fun and so meaningful. Nikki Lopez was the creator of the show, a uh, Boricua woman, Puerto Rican, from the island. I'm, I'm, I was born and raised stateside. But to have a show for kids that is based on our culture, that shows a little boy who's a pirate, you know, on all these adventures, saving the world, being a good pirate, it's, it's just a really beautiful thing for, for me to see, for my people to see, to feel represented by what, by what we're watching and to know that our kids are growing up watching that. And I play a fun villain named Pepito. So it's just <laughs> silly. I come in for a couple hours, record some stuff. Uh, you know, laugh with the writer's room, and, and it feels like family. Yeah. It's and, home. And nice to kind of uh, 
split the dark side. Uh, John Nails <laughs> a little, with a balance. little preschool entertainment. I love it. Thank you so much for stopping by, Robin. Pleasure always. And you can catch Welcome to Chippendales on Hulu now.